What's up, scholars? We are back, and I'm so excited. I hope that you're just as excited as I am. I am excited because we are moving into Earth science. We are studying the planet that we walk on every single day, the steps that we take, the air that we breathe, the things that we see. We are studying the world around us, and how cool is that? Did you know the Earth is the greatest storybook that has never fully been read. It is like a graphic novel that is constantly changing and constantly unfolding. Everything that we see has a story. Is that not cool? Everything that we see. The tree that I walk by, it has a story. The grass on the ground, it has a story. Everything has a story. And the earth is full of so many cool things. The soil that is on the ground, it has a story. The water that we drink or the water that falls from the sky, it has a story. The earth is the greatest graphic novel ever, hands down. And what we're going to do is we are going to look at the story behind some of the things that we interact with. For example, a rock. This is like a really cool looking rock. And I can describe this rock. I can look at it. I can see that it's, it's really smooth, but it's got sharp, pointy edges and a really cool shape. It almost looks like a mountain. Like if I was to cut out the rock in the shape of a mountain, this looks like a picture of that, and it would be huge in the sky, and there would be some guy trying to climb to the top of it, some personal achievement, so that he can stand on the top and look at the world and say that he's kind Like, that's a really, really, really cool rock, but this rock has a story. Did you know it didn't used to look like this? Did you know this rock began as small little sediments? Somewhere in the world, it began as these small little sediments, and these processes had to take place over long periods of time to be able to get this super cool rock for us to look at. And not all rocks are the same. Why? Because every rock, everything on the earth, every sediment has its own story. And isn't that awesome? This rock has a story. It's totally different from this one. Even the color is different. The texture is different. A shape is different. The mat, it's, di it's all different. And is it that cool? So we get to this place where we ask the questions when we're looking at all of these different stories from all of these different rocks and we start to wonder why? What happened? How? How? I, oh, did this one get like this? And this one is circular or more of a rounded shape and it's super smooth. Like I can rub this one against my skin with no fear of anything. No fear of anything. I'm not rubbing this against my skin. It's not gonna happen. I like my skin. My skin feels soft. My skin feels smooth. I rub this against my skin. It might not feel nice. So I'm not gonna do it. Why? Because it has a different story. And I wanna know why. Do you wanna know why? Because I wanna know why. Like, I wanna know why this rock and this one look very similar but this the color is similar in different places but this has reds whites and dark grays and and light grays and it's amazing so one of the things that helps us in understanding the story of how things going is we have to understand some of the processes that happen on the earth there are certain processes that happen on this earth that if we can understand them, we can look at how the earth is constantly changing and we can kind of get some insight. For example, think about, have you ever been outside with a water hose? And if you stick your finger in the water hose, the water shoots out really, really strong, right? And it's coming out really, really strong. Well, what happens if I take that water hose and I tilt it down towards the soil and I'm smashing it into the, what happens to the soil? The soil Move. There's a word for that. That is a perfect picture for a word of a process. But the process that we're going to talk about today is a process where bigger things get broken down into smaller things, right? For example, this rock, I told you, it used to be small sediments 
of soil. It is composed of these small little sediments. Well, how can I prove that? How do I know for a fact that this big one is composed of smaller sediments? Well, I can actually take this rock and I'm actually gonna stick it right in front of the camera and I can put it here and if I smack it, what do you notice happening? Can you see it? It's actually falling apart because it's a larger piece and it is composed of all of these tiny little sediments. Well, that process, this process of the breaking down of rocks is actually called weathering. Yes, don't confuse it with weather. It's not weather. Weather is the condition of the atmosphere at a certain place at a certain time. The weather, it was rainy this week. We had rain. That is the weather. It's not raining today. That is the weather. It's cool today. That is the weather. It was warm two weeks ago. That is the weather. We have hot summers in Texas. That is climate, the measure of the weather over a long period of time. This is a totally different thing. What we're talking about is weathering and weathering is the breaking down of rocks. And that is a very, very, very important process for how the world and why the world looks the way that it does. Weathering plays a part in me having this bag of sandy soil. Weathering plays a part in me having this bag of potting soil. Weathering plays a part in why this rock looks like this, why this one looks like this, and why this one looks like this. Weathering is important. And we're gonna go through so many different processes, so many different processes that lead us to understand that the earth is constantly changing, constantly changing. When I say constantly, it is constantly changing because of these processes. And with these changes, we've discovered not only is the earth changing, but it is full of many, 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 many useful resources. Our very first word that we are going to go as we begin in this story of how the earth came to be is weathering. And weathering is the breaking down of rocks. Now, here's what I want you to do. Everybody can come in contact with a rock. We can find a rock on the ground. We can find a rock all over the place. You can get two rocks and you can compare their characteristics and we can look at them and we can wonder, can they be weathered? And there are three things that really, that we study, three agents of erosion that weather, uh, that weather objects. One of them is the wind, moving air outside. One of them is water, and one of them is ice. And we'll do investigations over all three of those. We will do a wind investigation. We will do a water investigation. We will do an ice investigation. Now, how do we wrap all this together? We wrap all this together in that when this weathering is occurring, the earth is constantly changing. And so we give these things names, all of these changes, the way that land forms, we call them land forms. No play on words. Land forms, putting it together, it's the way land forms. And so we're going to look at how weathering and other agents of erosion and other processes create all these awesome land forms that we can study as well, okay? Our word for the day is weathering. And weathering is the breaking down of rocks is the breaking down of rocks, is the breaking down of rocks, and it breaks them down into small sediments that go on this lifelong journey to become something brand new. Scholars, you are amazing, you are awesome, you are on fire. Today we talked about how the earth is constantly changing, it's forever changing, but these changes lead us to some really awesome science and some really cool stuff to study. So we're moving into earth science. It's about to go down. It's about to be awesome. And you about to be able to, you better be able to tell me what is weathering, not weather, weathering in regards to earth science. Have an absolutely wonderful day. And we will be back on soon with more amazing science. You guys are awesome.